Hi, she was seven. So I got another video request asking, um, does the silent treatment work on men? For example, if you're mad at your man and you stop talking to him for a few days and you won't answer phone calls or texts or talk to him at all, does it work? Well, that all depends. What type of man is he? What type of woman are you? Are you? Do you talk all the time? Do you talk too much? Is this a vacation for him? <laughs> um, and does he give you the silent treatment thinking that it's going to work for him when he's upset at you? Um, usually the silent treatment only works on those people who also give the silent treatment as a form of punishment. Because some people, the silent treatment is nothing, you know? <clears throat> like for example, I don't care if someone doesn't talk to me because I'm too busy anyway to even really notice or realize it unless I speak to them and they don't talk to me back and and I'm like okay well I guess you got, you got an attitude today I don't really care though because I don't have time for that okay so it just depends on how emotional this, the person is how much they care to talk to you or not and also if they do the silent treatment themselves if they do the silent treatment themselves to you or other people that means to them it would hurt them if someone did it back to them so that's why they do it to you so if you, your man doesn't do the silent treatment to you, then it's probably not going to work on him. He probably doesn't really care. He probably says, well, it only will last a few days. I don't really care. It's a pattern. I'm used to it. She'll be mad. She's not going to talk to me for two days. That means I don't have to worry about what she says, what she thinks. I can do whatever I want. And then she won't be able to hold back any longer. And then, then my vacation will be over. So basically, that's how guys think about the silent treatment. Uh, there is an alternative, though. There is ignoring, ignoring the issue. It's reverse psychology and it works best for me. Um, I don't give the silent treatment because it's, it's useless for me. I will be nice. I will smile. I will be extra cool. I will be like, okay, yes. That right there sends a message like, I know I messed up. and Why is she being so nice to me? And I wonder what she's planning and what she's got going on. And, is she doing something behind my this starts him to think and then he'll come back and apologize and try to do right because if you're not even mad at him and you're acting extra like extra nice smiling do you want something to eat you want some coffee um but just but it's the tone of your voice that lets him know you're still upset it's like for example if you're cooking or something or if you're making coffee or getting a snack for yourself and you ask, do you want something to eat? Do you want a snack? This is how you ask. ask. You'd be like, I'm making some coffee. Would you like a cup? And he'll be like, um, I don't know. Uh, no thanks. And then it's like, okay. And they just walk out. And then uh, you offer it. You ask. You're still being polite. But it was your tone that lets him know you're still mad. Okay, now it's what's more annoying is not being ignored, but being talked to with a tone. And silent treatment really doesn't work because they basically just have freedom to not hear your voice and hear your opinions and hear what you think about them. So for me, I would the the silent treatment is if he likes you more than you like him. It might work, but if it's the other way around, if you like him more than he likes you, it doesn't matter. The silent treatment is not going to work. <clears throat> if you talk too much and he ignores half the stuff you say, the silent treatment is probably a blessing to him. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to answer that quick question. And also, um, I'm going to do like a part two. Um, um, video response in this video because someone else asked me another question so I'm just gonna go ahead and put that in there in this video as well someone asked me um, what do I think about um, polygamy <sighs> well as long as the man is rich and he can afford to have two wives. I mean, really afford it. Like, to spoil each wife. To have them their own separate homes. Or own separate whatever. I, I don't think it, there's anything wrong with that. But if you're poor and struggling. And use a religion 
to justify having two women, I think it's pretty stupid and dumb. Unless you can afford to have two women. Most men can't even afford one woman. <laughs> so when I when I hear certain people speak about polygamy, I just laugh and just like, oh my God, are you serious? Can't even afford to take care of yourself and you're talking about polygamy. Mm -mm. But if you really think about it, a lot of men already have polygamy in sort of a way because they have multiple children by multiple women. So it's basically the same thing except they can't afford them. So I don't really believe in it because there's not the financial backing, um, you know, in society to maintain any type of polygamous household unless y'all like join some kind of community or commune or something. I really don't see it happening. And I, I don't think I would want, like personally, if it was me, I really wouldn't care if, um, like there's shows on TV about this, but I don't, I'm not the type of girl that gets jealous because the type of man I married anyway, it's not going to, uh, the type of man that I would marry would be like someone who could take care of me and stuff like that. I wouldn't, I would not really care if he could take care of another woman as long as I'm still get, getting taken care, taken care of. And I have to be the legal spouse. Okay. Because we all know polygamy is not legal in the United States, but I have to be on paper as the spouse. The other girl can just be the concubine or whatever. And, and she can't live in my house. Um, <laughs> so I'm not saying I agree with it, but I'm saying I'm going to have to have that paper. I'm going to have to have the marriage license. <clears throat> Y'all can fool and trick the other girl, but I'm, you know, mm -mm, not going to work for me. <laughs> but yeah, there's that. That is actually a topic of discussion, which is kind of stupid to me in this day and age when people can barely afford to take a girl out on a date and pay for it. They talk about polygamy. Please. Poly polyga, please. <laughs> I don't think so. Mm. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> um, so it is the holiday season. It's Thanksgiving next week. I got in-laws coming in. Now, how do you deal with these in-laws? Say you don't get along with your in-laws or your partner's parents or family. What do you do? I get, I don't, I get along with mine because, um, like, we barely know each other. So, everybody's still in that polite phase, you know. And when I say we barely know each other, it's because his, um, his family didn't come around until a lot later and introduce themselves and stuff because they live far away and... I don't know, some kind of family drama a long time ago. But anyway, so they're coming now. They came last summer. And so we really don't have anything to talk about, so it's not that big of a deal. They're like from the country, and they cook, and they do all this stuff, so I just let them have the kitchen. I don't care because let's work for me, okay? I'm not one of those women that say, oh, well, I, I, I or try to show off my, my skills and my house uh, domestic skills and cooking skills and no, I don't want another person in my kitchen. I don't care. As long as I don't have to wash dishes or cook, I am good. Y'all do all the work. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. <laughs> because y'all have a lot, like y'all have a lot of women who are like competitive against each other and oh, I, I can cook better than you or this is my way of doing things and like, I don't care. As long as I don't have to do them, your, your way is good. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. So, <laughs> family drama is best to go, you know, <clears throat> go with the flow. Just if they want to take the kitchen, take, let them take the kitchen. Let them take it over. It's less work for you. If they want to use their special recipe instead of yours, let them do it. It's less work for you. You have more time to go shop online, go to Black Friday. If you do shop Black Friday, I don't. Um, watch your favorite movies. You have all that time to do that instead of worrying about who cooks the best. It's still going to get eaten. People are still going to eat the food. And it's still going to be, you know, basically, you know, the same food that's being cooked over and over each year. So it really doesn't matter anyway. But, yeah. So what do you do if you're fighting with your spouse or boyfriend around the holidays and you don't get introduced to the family and y'all don't go out together and he spends it separately? then most likely you're a side chick and he, or he's found someone new. 
that he wants to replace you with. And he's not bringing you around the family for a reason because he's trying to distance himself and you and his family from each other. Okay? So, FYI, if you have been sidelined for the holidays um, because you feel like something is going on and he's trying to keep you separated, then you're probably either the side chick or you're probably getting replaced. Yeah. Or his baby mama, if he has one, is going to be there. So. Whatever the reason is, that's, you know, that's something to deal with altogether. Now, I know a lot of people are trying to find a man or a woman this time of year so they can have, um, you know, somebody for the holidays. And like I said in my other videos, it's a really good time. But when you, when you are out there, like, desperate, it shows. So act like you already have a man. Act like you already have a woman. Act like you're already happy. And that's what attracts more people. You know, if you're just looking lonely and, oh, it's the holidays, I'm going to kill myself, nobody loves me. They're not going to want to be around somebody like that. That's going to depress them. So be happy, you know. Um, cheerful. That's what they're attracted to, especially around the holidays. They want someone to make them happy. They want someone to fulfill um, their time and uh, holiday vacation and stuff like that with and share certain things with. They don't want somebody all mopey. Anyway, I know this is just a bunch of stuff put together in one video, but I really didn't want to spend a whole video on one topic, so I kind of broke it up into a few topics, okay? So if y'all have in-laws coming for the holidays, if you have not met your boyfriend's uh, family for, for some reason or another, if he won't introduce them to you, um, let me know if y'all want me to make a separate video on that, meeting the parents, meeting the family. How do you get to the point where he will introduce you to his family? If y'all want that video, thumbs up. And please let me know it in the comments and I can, I can kind of help you. Um, <clears throat> but when a guy introduces you to his parents, it's very, very, very special. So you got to play a role. Okay? Okay, I will see y'all later. And um, if I don't make another video before Thanksgiving, y'all, happy Thanksgiving. But I have a feeling I might. So if I don't, happy Thanksgiving. And uh, see y'all later. Bye.